Welcome to this overview presentation of Mobile Logic's Field Ops, the ultimate service dispatch scheduling software. During this brief overview, we're going to take a look at the Mobile Logic Field Ops scheduling and dispatching features. As we arrive here at the front customer lookup screen, you'll see we have a list of all of our service locations. What I'm going to do during this example is pull up a customer by the name of Academy of Merit and go directly to their customer history screen. Once at their customer history screen, I'm going to go ahead and take a service call. I'm going to assume that this customer is on the phone and we need to go ahead and take a call for this particular customer. I'm going to go ahead and click the new button. It will automatically open up a call taking screen for us. At this point, I can go ahead and override any of the defaulted information that's on this particular call if I need to. Otherwise, I click the next button. I'm going to leave the default call type to service, although it could be set and preset by you to different types of call types. I'm going to indicate the type of problem, and this is just going to be a uh, generic service call. Again, I can preset the different types of problems in a list here. And I'm going to put in my caller notes here. So whatever the caller is telling me on the phone, I can put the information in here. And this information will also print on the work order form. At this point, I'm going to leave the rest of this information blank, defaulted. And I'm not going to put any additional notes in, although I can. I can indicate the method of payment if I choose to, as well as a customer PO number. I'm going to pass over that this time. I'm going to assume it's today's date. I'm going to assume the starting time is going to be at 8 o'clock in the morning. And I'm not going to pre-assign it to a technician. I'm going to assign the priority status as urgent. I'm going to leave the default as it currently is. I will go ahead and pass this time and not print a work order ticket and take the call. That's as simple as it is to take a service call. Now you'll notice as I go into the Mobile Logic Field Ops Dispatch Board, the D Board, that call has been automatically transferred into the column called unassigned. I'm going to grab that call with my mouse, drag and drop, and give it to Bruce. And that's as simple as it is to assign a call to a specific technician. Let's go ahead and take another call. Reaching up to the customer lookup tab, I'm going to now look for a customer by the name of Lowe's. And there's the Lowe's that I need by starting to type L-O-W-E. I'm going to bring that customer in. They're on the phone. They're having a problem right now. I'm going to click the new button. I'm going to default to the second screen, open up my drop down list, indicate that this is a miscellaneous startup, and this is my caller notes as we're on the phone. Again, I'm just going to let the defaults ride here, go directly to my last page. I'm going to default this to today's date. I'm going to assume that this is a 10 o'clock call. I'm going to make this an urgent call and say finish. That call again has been taken that quickly. Going up to my dispatch board, you can see Lowe's is now in the unassigned column. I'm going to drag and drop that call and also give it to Bruce. Bruce has two calls in his column. A total of 1.5 hours has been pre-assigned to those two jobs. If I point to any particular ticket here, you'll notice that the information in these three boxes correspond to that ticket that's being highlighted. Again, if I point to this ticket, that information points to that particular ticket. I'm going to go back up to the Academy of Merit and right click this time and go directly into that particular ticket. You'll notice that the estimated repair time was not preset. I'm going to go ahead and change it to two hours and you'll now see that Bruce has a total of 3.5 hours of work assigned to him with those two calls. By right clicking on any ticket you can see that there's a list of intuitive features that are available, including the ability to display a map if you'd like to on the board immediately. Let's go ahead and take another call. Back up to customer lookup. This time I've got a customer on the phone, which happens to be Hanson, H-A-N. You can see it scrolls directly to Jim Jones there at Hanson's. We're going to pull his record open. He's got a problem right now. We've gone directly to his customer history. We can look at prior work orders. We can look at equipment that's installed at his location, service contracts, any prior notes that we have with him. Uh, let's see, we're going to add an additional note here this time. We just talked to Jim on the phone, and he mentioned that he needs a quote. So I'm going to put in here needs quote, so I can go ahead and just have a notation of that. Call for added information. So I've got a quick notation on that, um, and I recorded that here. I could also put it directly here into my leads, 
and open this up and create a brand new lead so that I have a new lead and it's going to be a new job. Uh, the lead type, uh, job type might be a replacement, where it came from, with the yellow pages, was it a direct referral, and you can customize those lists. Uh, the disposition is I need to do a follow-up. I need to do the follow-up by tomorrow. Uh, I can pre-assign that to any of my service technicians or salespeople. And now that is a brand new lead. I'm not going to create a quote at this point, but I've just created a new lead uh, for that particular customer's information. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and assume that the telephone rings again. I can pick up the phone. I've got customer lookup again open. I'm going to go down this time because Barnes Barbecue is on the phone. So let me go ahead and type that in. And let me go ahead and click on Barnes Barbecue on Maple Street. They've got an issue right now, so I'm going to take a new service call. It opens up the call taking wizard. I click on new. This is my drop down customized list of the problems that I typically respond to regarding my type of business. In this case, I'm going to just say it's a miscellaneous call, and I'm going to add the caller notes here. And again, I'm going to just cycle through the call taking wizard that's prompting me through the call. I don't need to put a PO in. I'm going to indicate now that this is going to be a, a 12 p.m. type call for one of my technicians. I'm not going to pre assign it with any further information. I'm just going to let it default to the dispatch board and then of course whoever does the dispatching can click drag and drop and assign it to whomever they want to on the dispatch board. Multiple people can be working on this dispatch board at the same time throughout the office. If you have more than one dispatcher, all the systems will refresh immediately when the information is changed on any of the dispatch boards. Let's talk briefly about the dispatch board again. Uh, for those of you that like to use the classic board with slots on the left, this is probably used by the majority of our customers uh, to schedule their calls. But we also have the time-based board, where if you want to go ahead and put time slots on the left, you can do that and have all of your calls lined up and uh, broken out so you can see them more visually this way. Uh, the dispatch board has features in here where you can zoom in if you have larger monitors or zoom out if you'd like to to see a bigger snapshot picture. If it happens to get too small, we'll actually show those with an overlay on both the types of dispatch boards. We can go ahead and do the same type of features here by zooming in and zooming out so we can have as many columns as we need to with as many technicians as we need to. Many of our customers will have the large monitors on the wall and have the capability of showing this information. You'll also notice maybe from our prior videos that we've done that we can have placeholders on here like parts to order, parts on order, parts are in, uh, needs a quote, etc. And again, it's just quickly click, drag, and dropping to get this information from one location to another. The dispatch board has many features. Obviously, if you want to use it in a very simple fashion, you can, and you do not you need to use a lot of the different feature functions. There's a separate video that addresses the features that you're more than welcome to watch as well. For those of you that would like to get the information directly out to your technicians in the field, we have the ability to use timestamps and we can push this information directly out to the technicians in a simple page uh, with using email or text messaging to automatically get the information directly out to your techs in the field without having to tie up the phones. And for those of you that may use our Mobile Logic Field Desk mobile with tablets in the field, this will also push the information directly out to that technician in the field so that he gets the information and you'll note here that as we push the information out it actually timestamps that record with when we did it and also it records the fact that this particular tech has a mobile device in the field and we've sent that information to him. All of these things are visual tools for the dispatcher to at a glance be able to see exactly what the status is of any job at any moment. This concludes our overview of the scheduling and dispatching features of the Mobile Logic Field Ops D Board. Of course, if you'd like a personal demonstration to see all of the features that are available within the Mobile Logic Field Ops system, please contact us at 913-642-4883 or you can reach out to us online at mobilelogicfieldops.com.